Hello friends, this is Priyanka. Today we are going to study how to draw pressure enthalpy diagram for the three stage compression system with flash chambers. So here the system is given where the low pressure, intermediate pressure and high pressure compressors are there with these flash chambers F1 and F2. Now if we observe this system, here is the evaporator as well as condenser also. Now we will draw the pressure enthalpy diagram. So for this, this is the saturated liquid line and here is the saturated vapor line. Now we will first consider at this point 7 that is when the refrigerant is leaving this condenser then it is at the condenser pressure and it is at the saturated liquid state now we we know that when the refrigerant is passing from this condenser or the condensation process is taking place the refrigerant is converted into the saturated liquid state and what is the pressure that is the condenser pressure pc now if we observe here is the evaporator pressure that is the minimum pressure so we will write here the minimum pressure pe and here is the condenser pressure that is pc that is the maximum pressure and in between that there are the two pressures for this flash chamber that is the here are two flash chambers so here is the f1 and f2 so i will write here first that is the pressure of flash chamber F2 that is PF2 and then pressure of flash chamber F1 that is PF1. Now we will first take at this point 7 what is the condition of the refrigerant. So here the pressure is condenser pressure and the state of the refrigerant is at saturated liquid line. So here is the point of intersection. So when the refrigerant is leaving the condenser here is the point 7. Now we will consider what is the process 7 to 8. Now if we observe in this process 7 to 8 expansion wall E3 is there. So here the expansion process is taking place at the constant enthalpy. Now we will consider what is the mass of this uh, refrigerant. So at point 7 we will consider mass will be M. So I am writing here in the bracket that is mass of refrigerant is M. So this mass M refrigerant is getting expanded at the constant enthalpy. So I will write here the uh, expansion process or draw here the expansion process enthalpy is constant. So we have to draw a straight line. Now this is getting expanded up to the pressure of this flash chamber 2 that is PF2. So we have to extend this line only up to this PF2. So draw here and this will be the point 8. When we observe this point 8 is in between saturated liquid and saturated vapor. So here there is the separation. So liquid refrigerant is moving from this point 8 to point 9 and vapor refrigerant is moving from this point 8 to point 5. And it is at the saturated vapor state. So we can say that here on the saturated liquid line there is the point 9 and on the saturated vapor line there is the point 5. So in this way here will be point 9. So what is the mass at this point 9 because some vapor refrigerant is moving for towards this point 5. So we can say that at point 5 there is the mass M5. So I will write here. 0.5 the mass of refrigerant is m5 so how to calculate this mass m5 that is the previous mass is m so this m multiplied by the dryness fraction at this point 8 so here i will show in the form of dash here is the dryness fraction at this point 8 that is x8 so we have to multiply with this m multiplied by x8 that is dryness fraction will give us the mass at 0.5 that is the m5 now we know that what what is the mass at this point 9 so this total mass before entering into this flash chamber was m m minus this m5 will give us the mass at the point 9 that is m9 so i will write here the mass at this point 9 that will be m9 so, M9 is equal to M minus M5. 
so what is m5 that is m5 that is m multiplied by the dryness fraction at point 8 that is x8 so we can again simplify this so m9 is equal to m multiplied by 1 minus x8 so this is also the formula to calculate the mass at point 9 now again we will move for the next process so for the process 9 to 10 the refrigerant is moving to the expand from the expansion wall e2 that is again expansion processes taking place at the constant enthalpy so we have to show that now here the expansion is taking place up to this flash chamber pressure f1 so here is the pf1 so again we have to show that the straight vertical line in the downward direction and here is the point 10. Now what we observe here again this point 10 that is the refrigerant is in the liquid plus vapor form. Now observe this at this flash chamber here are the vapors. So vapor refrigerant are moving for this point 3. So here we can say that the mass at this point 3 will be m3. So I am writing here. We have to show that separation of the refrigerant in liquid as well as vapor. So liquid refrigerant is passing through this saturated liquid line. So this liquid, so, so the process is 10 to 11. So at point 11 only liquid refrigerant is there. So at this saturated liquid line we can say here is the point 11 and the vapor refrigerant is passing to this point 3 that means we have to show that the vapor re refrigerant at the saturated vapor line so i am showing here with the help of the arrow and that will be the point 3 because if we observe here is the point 3 so this is the point 3 now again we have to calculate what is the mass of refrigerant at point 3 because we know that this refrigerant at point 10 is getting separated some refrigerant is passed to this uh, saturated vapor line and some refrigerant is at the saturated liquid line so what is the mass at this point 3 that is m3 we will say m3 so m3 is equal to now what is the previous mass that is m9 multiplied by the dryness fraction at this point in so i will show here here will be dryness fraction at this point in so remember we have to take the previous mass that is m9 multiplied by the dryness fraction that is x10 now if we take here m9 into x10 so what is the value of m9 so m9 is equal to m1 minus x8 so we can replace this value multiplied by x10 so this is also the formula to calculate the mass at point 3 now how to calculate the mass of refrigerant at this point 11. So before separation into liquid and vapor what is the mass that is the mass M9 and what is the mass of vapor refrigerant that is M3. So M9 minus M3. So we can take here mass of M9 that is M1 minus X8 and M3 that is M1 minus X8 in into x10 so when we simplify this that means when we take this m 1 minus x8 as a common what is remaining that is 1 minus x10 so this is the final formula to calculate the mass at this point 11 so we can show that here this is the liquid refrigerant from the process 10 uh, 10 to 11 that we have to show arrow then what is happening next so again m11 mass is passing through this expansion wall and the expansion is done at the constant enthalpy up to the evaporator pressure so here is the evaporator pressure so we have to show that and this is the point 12 so again if we observe this point 12 is having the liquid vapor mixture of the refrigerant now what is the mass that is m11 that will be passing through this evaporation process so we can say that evaporation process that is the mass is m11 is passing that is the same mass is passing for this evaporation for the 12 to 1 so i will show this the process of evaporation so here we have to show arrow and here is the point 1 now for this point 1 we will say mass is m1 so what is the mass m1 
now how to calculate the mass m1 for this evaporation process so we know that mass passing through this evaporator is equal to the refrigeration effect divided by the change in enthalpy during the evaporation so what is the refrigeration effect that is re and if the load on evaporator is given re is equal to 210 q and what is the change in enthalpy that is h1 minus h12 so from this we can say that h1 minus h12 so here is the point 1 so i will show here the enthalpy h1 and here is the h12 so if we observe h12 is equal to hf11 because this point 11 is on the saturated liquid line so we can also take h1 minus hf11 so m1 which is equal to m11 which is equal to 210q h1 minus h12 if we observe here is the equation m11 that means m1 which is equal to 210q h1 minus h12 so what is the value of m11 so from this equation 1 m into 1 minus x at 1 minus x10 so if we observe what is the mass m so mass m that is at 0.7 that is the mass of refrigerant that is passing through this condenser or the condensation process so we can here keep this value of m or we can calculate this value of m by putting the value of this m11 that is 210q by h1 minus h12 so how to calculate the mass of refrigerant that is passing through this condenser that is m is equal to 210q divided by h1 minus h12 now we will take this term to the left hand side to the denominator that is divide here 1 minus x set into 1 minus x 10 so here this is the formula for the calculation of mass m of the refrigerant passing for this condenser now we will complete what is the compression process so if we observe here the mass m1 is passing that is mass m1 is equal to mass at the point 11 that is m11 is passing through this low pressure compressor and it is getting compressed up to now if we observe this line this is the output line from this low pressure compressor is directly moves towards the condenser pressure that means we have to show the compression process 1 to 2 that is the isentropic compression that means this here the entropy remains constant and it is up to the pressure that is condenser pressure so here is the point 1 and we have to show the constant entropy line from this 1 to this pressure PC so here is the pressure PC and this is the line with constant entropy at this point 1 so here is the point 2 so this compression process is getting completed now again if we move here the next process that is the compression process at this intermediate pressure at point 3 so what is the mass at point 3 that is the mass m3 this refrigerant of mass m3 is getting compressed up to this condenser pressure so again we have to show this the process 3 to 4 so at this point 4 what is the pressure for this mass m3 refrigerant that is equal to this condenser pressure so for this constant entropy so here also we have to show this that is the line with constant entropy so here is the process 4 so here is the point 4 now again if we observe this mass m5 refrigerant is moving towards this high pressure compressor and again the compression process is taking place up to this condenser pressure so from this point 5 to 6 we have to show here the compression process and here the point of intersection will give us the point 6 now what is happening after compression the refrigerants at point 2 4 and 6 are getting added to each other and finally it is moving in the condenser and getting condensed up to the saturated liquid line so we have to add all this refrigerant so i am adding this refrigerant and then there is the condensation process so we have to show arrow here so in this way this pressure enthalpy diagram is getting completed 
now if we observe what is the work done at this low pressure compressor so for this low pressure compressor the mass of refrigerant is m1 and what is the enthalpy difference that is h2 minus h1 so what is this mass m1 so how we can write this mass m1 in the form of m so here mass m1 we can write in the form of m that is m multiplied by 1 minus x8 multiplied by 1 minus x10 here multiplied by h2 minus h1 that is the enthalpy difference we have to take as it is so remember from this diagram we have to consider this two dryness fraction that is m1 is equal to m into 1 minus x8 multiplied by 1 minus x10 now again what is the work done at this intermediate pressure compressor that is wi is equal to what is the mass of refrigerant that is this mass m3 so i will write here m3 is moving for this intermediate pressure compressor so m3 multiplied by enthalpy difference during compression that is 3 to 4 that is h4 minus h3 so how we can write this mass m3 in terms of m so if we observe the previous dryness fraction that we have to consider so m3 is equal to we can write here m multiplied by the dryness fraction at this point 8 and point 10 so here m multiplied by x10 multiplied by 1 minus x8 so here this is the formula and we have to write here h4 minus h3 as it is now what is the work done at this high pressure so mass m5 is entering so m5 multiplied by the enthalpy difference during the process 5 to 6 that is h6 minus h5 so what is the m5 that is the mass at this point 5 so again we have to refer here this dryness fraction so m5 how we can write in terms of m that is m5 is equal to m multiplied by the dryness fraction at this point 8 that is x8 so from the diagram it is easy to remember these formulas and these formulas are important file calculation so here how to calculate this total work done so total work done that is wl plus wi plus wh so we can add all these right hand side formula now what is the power required to drive the system that is work done by 60 so here p is equal to w by 60 kilowatt then what is the refrigeration effect so we know the if load on this evaporator is given that is q then re is equal to 210 q and then what is the coefficient of performance that is this refrigeration effect by work done so for work done as per the given data we can uh, use any formula so for work done you can we can use here the formula in terms of m or we can use the formula in terms of m1 m3 and m5 and for the w we can also use here w is equal to p multiplied by 60 suppose the power required is given then we can use this formula